Owl trash hurts the most vulnerable too. More than one in 10 species that have fallen victim to marine debris are threatened with extinction. Where does all our rubbish end up? As much as 70% of marine litter has been estimated to end up on the seabed. But there is good news. Scuba divers everywhere are standing up to the onslaught of debris, fins on and off. We're removing debris underwater and logging the data to influence change at all levels. On land, we can work together to stop rubbish from entering the ocean. We can help inform community action, drive changes in infrastructure and waste management policies and identify local solutions. Don't let your dives go to waste. Dive against debris. Together, we can help prevent Welcome back to Philippines Uncut. I'm your host, Buddy Conan. Tonight's topic is International Coastal Cleanup 2016. And joining me is the Secretary General of ICC along with Dave Bayarong. Dave, welcome back to our third and final segment. Now, before we stop for our break and the second segment, we saw a nice video about someone in Alongapo. I think it was Count then Councillor John Cortez giving a very impassioned speech. What is this about, this, this event? Uh, this is about, this event is uh, actually the launching of the last year's International Coastal Cleanup, dubbed as Making Rebirth Possible. And um, our vice mayor is uh, has, uh, giving out a speech and uh, actually uh, having a roar for the people not to do it now rather than do it later. Don't do it tomorrow. Don't do it next week. Do it now. There's a big problem. Yeah, and you know, um, as I mentioned earlier, that's really what's needed here, uh, a paradigm shift, a change in the way people think because the problem is the, problem is the people. The problem is the people throwing the trash in, 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 in the water and the people just stop doing that. Then, you know, we wouldn't have this problem, no? Mm -hmm. And uh, let's talk about the international coastal cleanup. Uh, this happens once a year, but really, it really is more symbolic than anything. I mean, what can you really accomplish in, in, in one day, right? So, so even if you did, probably even if you did this every day, uh, the entire year, it would, it would still not really make a dent in the amount of trash that's being thrown out there. Correct, right. correct. Actually, uh, we do this, as you say, this is a very symbolic thing on uh, on uh, 17, no? on September 17. And this is just to have our uh, kids and also the NGOs and all of the people really see how many trash is being collected in our coastline. This is not just because we, we only see, if, if it's just ourselves, we only see probably just a handful of trash. You see, I, I only throw this amount of trash, no money, it's okay. But if you go to the coastline, if you go to the ocean where there is literally an ocean of trash or, 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 or a coastline of trash, then that's the time that you see yourself, that you think and you say to yourself, this is really bad. Yes, yes. And you know, I, I have to say that very admirable really how everyone in Olongapo and Zambales, Greater Zambales has come together to help. Now, like you, we have the LGU, Local Government of, of, uh, of uh, Olongapo. You have SBMA, you've got the NGO, civil society, you've got the barangays. You said every barangay in Olongapo City has a, a certain area you know, yes. that they're responsible for. Yes, probably this is uh, would be uh, very, very uh, an active barangays that we have, and it's probably uh, the only the only LGU in the Philippines that does that. Uh, every barangay has their own site, and they manage their own site. Not just uh, those are small barangays that only have one site, but the biggest barangay that we have, we have three to two to three sites that they manage, and uh, that's where all the volunteers come in. Because before, when we have uh, uh, this amount of people, we only have one site. Uh, one in Longapo City, one in SBMA, and a lot of people comes there, and it's uh, mostly um, not manageable because of the number of people. You have seven thousand sure, people in sure. one area. It's, uh, some it's useless. Of the it's, it's useless. In, yeah, some of the people yeah. just go there, take yeah. pictures, yeah, and, and then go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, what 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 we saw was, it's not just in the coastline. It's an end product. The the trash that you see in the coastline, it's probably an end product of the trash being thrown in the canals, in the, river in the rivers, in the, yes. and all of this drainage. That's why we've tapped all of these barangay, barangay captains, and they're very helpful in Olongapo City. That's why I want to thank, to thank all of our barangay captains, all of our uh, barangay workers, that they uh, stepped up uh, for this international coastal cleanup so that in their barangays, in their own little space, in their place, they do the cleanup as well. No, very admirable, and I wish that uh, other chapters of ICC in the Philippines can can work with LGUs like this, and other LGUs can follow the lead, uh, the example of Olongapo, and get everyone involved. No, we hope. I, I really hope. I really hope that uh, 
all of not just some but all of our LGUs here in the Philippines province uh, municipalities and also cities uh, go to this uh, ICC look at it you can go to Olongapo city you can talk to us and uh, we can show you how we do the this. model the of, model of how you the model of it. how we do it and uh, you can recreate it in your city in your municipality in your province and uh, probably one day not just next year probably in the next 10 years probably in the next 20 years we will be have a trash free environment <laughs> I, hope, I hope yeah because <laughs> one of the, the um, one of the speakers in the other video we saw was very vocal when he said Focus on a trash-free life, mm -hmm. right? It means uh, letting go of plastics, keeping it to a minimum, the use of the minimum, no? Actually, Recycling. Uh, actually, there is uh, one video. Uh, uh, I saw one video in YouTube, and um, he's a blogger, that he is really reducing um, his uh, plastic consumption. Not just probably plastic, but trash. Zero trash. He's not... Uh, uh, putting trash into into his garbage bin for like the whole year. Yeah. Um, this is practically just managing uh, whatever you buy, whatever you use, uh, whatever you bring back, and to make sure that everything that you, because if you buy something, for example, plastic bottles, you can reuse it. For example, um, other kinds of plastic, you can do something else. I'll give you an example. Uh, with the amount of plastic bottles that uh, we saw in one video, yeah. uh, Kanina, uh, that is nga, uh, probably 10 times the Eiffel Tower, uh, back in 2010, uh, relating this one to one of my passion, which is football, no? uh, back in 2010 World Cup, most of the major brands uh, recycled these pet bottles and make it into a high-level performance jersey. So the jerseys that you saw back in yeah. 2010 and probably after that up to now are uh, recycled from pet bottles. Yeah. So I guess it's a combination really of number one, recycling and trying to, to lessen our, our, our footprint, our plastic footprint by using less plastics or maybe reusing them, using, uh, uh, as you said, eco-friendly bags, mm -hmm. paper bags, things like that, recyclable, from, made from re recyclable fibers and stuff. And very important, throwing the trash where it's supposed to be thrown, right? That, that is, that that is, really is the, that the really biggest is the problem. Biggest problem that we have. Um, as I've said uh, a while ago, we have, uh, Olonga City has a very efficient uh, trash collection. And um, still, we encounter that kind of, uh, of trash thrown into the rivers, into the canals, and into the, and into the ocean. And you guys in ICC, aside from doing this once a year cleanup, of the coast. You also do, I uh, understand quickly, um, you, you also do um, uh, tours and, and uh, school tours and educational programs to help, you know, make people aware of this problem. No? Yes, we go to schools, uh, especially the flag ceremony where all of the kids are in the, in, in the main grounds. And uh, we discuss to them and we uh, educate them with regards to trash and uh, what kind of trash are being thrown, the number one trash, you know, those kinds of data so that they can uh, really quantify on their head what's happening uh, in our environment. Apart from that, we also have what we call the International Coastal Cleanup Recyclable Regatta, where um, barangays, uh, private companies, m recycled all of these pet bottles and different kinds of things, make them into a boat, and then we have a competition. They race, they race their boat into a 100 meters or 200 meters uh, race, and then uh, that's, that, that's a good thing because even with those boats, they recycle that boat. They can put it into their barangay. Disaster comes, you can use those boats. <laughs> during floods. Again, during yeah, no? floods, perfect, during perfect. Uh, any disasters. Now, you know, very admirable uh, what you guys are doing in ICC. Um, my question is, um, you've been doing it for this for several years. Do you feel like you're making a dent in changing the way people think? Because I think that's the biggest challenge and the most important thing, to change the way people think. Are you making a, a difference? Do you feel it happening? Do you feel people changing their, their, the way they think about uh, how they use plastics and you know, raising awareness of the proper way to dispose of these? Yes, yes, I think uh, we do. We do make a, a, even a small dent would be, would be good. Again, this is, our, this is an advocacy that uh, we, we don't see this as a very short term. We see this as a very long-term uh, advocacy that we are having because, as you said, we started this eight years ago back in 2008. And up until now, we, s we keep on doing it. And the number of people that uh, is coming to volunteer just to, just to make a show of volunteer, and they, are, uh, and they are saying that, okay, now here's what we're going to do. 
we are gonna be a much more uh, responsible person in throwing our trash. That's why with all the data that uh, we are gathering, now some of our uh, restaurants in Olongapo City has banned using plastic straw. You cannot, if, if you get the soft drinks or you get uh, uh, this kind of drinks in, your, in the restaurant, they won't give you any straw anymore. Mm -hmm. Or maybe use recyclable straws made from recyc uh, uh, biodegradable material. Biodegradable material, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, uh, quickly, we have about a minute to close. Uh, what are the highlights of uh, September 17th events? Are there something that, uh, I mean, what are the main events happening that day? So the main events that uh, are happening in the International Coastal Cleanup uh, uh, Olongapo City will be having, as I've said, we'll be having the uh, recyclable regatta and uh, we'll be having the day itself, or we call it the D-Day, which is September 17, uh, where all of the volunteers go into all of the sites and uh, clean and uh, make use of the data card so that we can have all, it, all of these data. And also on uh, September 30, we will be having the International Coastal Cleanup Summit uh, where we'll be uh, giving all of the, we'll be having a lot of speakers coming in international and also locally. Great, and uh, great. our keynote speaker for that uh, would be our very own secretary of uh, DNR, uh, Ms. Lopez. Wow, Gina Lopez. So Gina Lopez. our environment warrior. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. um, Dave, uh, thank you for coming to the show. Would you like to say something to the audience before we go? Maybe tell them how to uh, you know, volunteer, how to get information about this event happening in Olongapo on the 17th? On, uh, on the 17th, again, I would like to encourage everyone, uh, all of the Filipinos, not just Filipinos, all around the world, uh, everybody uh, to volunteer on September 17th for the International Coastal Cleanup. That is the third Saturday of September. Uh, for more information, you can uh, go to the ICC website, the icc.ph, and uh, you can register there online, uh, wherever you are, um, either in the Philippines or you are all over the country, uh, you can go and register online. Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, and uh, bravo, good work, and uh, good luck on the 17th. And more power to you guys. Keep up uh, this, this advocacy. Thank you. Very Thank, you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed our show tonight on the coming International Coastal Cleanup on September 17th. Join us again next week here in the show where we talk about what matters to you guys because you guys matter most. See you next week. Second segment, we saw a nice video about someone in Olongapo. I think it was count then Councillor John Cortez giving a very impassioned speech. What is this about this this event? Uh, this is about this event is uh, actually the launching of the last year's international coastal cleanup dubbed as making rebirth possible. And um, our vice mayor is uh, has uh, giving out a speech and um, actually uh, having a roar for the people, not to do it now rather than do it later. It can help inform community action, drive changes in infrastructure and waste management policies, and identify local solutions. Don't let your dives go to waste. Dive against debris. Together, we can help prevent. Welcome back to Philippines Uncut. I'm your host, Buddy Kunan, and tonight's topic is International Coastal Cleanup 2016. And joining me is the Secretary General of ICC Olongapo, Dave Bayarong. Dave, welcome back to our third and final segment. Now, before we stop for our break... And trash hurts the most vulnerable too. More than one in ten species that have fallen victim to marine debris are threatened with extinction. Where does all our rubbish end up? As much as 70% of marine litter has been estimated to end up on the seabed. But there is good news. Scuba divers everywhere are standing up to the onslaught of debris, fins on and off. We're removing debris underwater and logging the data to influence change at all levels. On land, we can work together to stop rubbish from entering the ocean. We Don't do it tomorrow, don't do it next week. 
do it now. There's a big problem. Yeah, and you know, um, as I mentioned earlier, that's really what's needed here, uh, a paradigm shift, a change in the way people think, because the problem is the, problem is the people. The problem is the people throwing the trash in, 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 in the water, and if people just stop doing that, then you know, we wouldn't have this problem. No? Mm -hmm. And uh, let's talk about the international coastal cleanup. Uh, this happens once a year, but really, it really is more symbolic than anything. I mean, what can you really accomplish?